How's it going everybody? This is Doom Kid. I'm just here today for a brief little video talking about the sources of some of the Doom music. Specifically the song Donna to the Rescue and also I want to take a quick look at At Doom's Gate as well. This is the early version of Donna to the Rescue here. I've got on the top here and on the bottom I've got a song called Body Count in the House by the band Body Count. I think it's clear that even though this MIDI mentions Outshined specifically in the metadata, it doesn't sound anything like Outshined. Now just for comparison, we have an MIDI of Outshined, which was also an unused Doom song. So see, this is Un32 here. Donna to the Rescue is Un37. So if we play Un32, Now that is very clearly a MIDI of the song Outshined. We have Donna to the Rescue here, which sounds nothing like the last song. And I'd like to show you that it is almost identical to Body Counts in the House. So let's go ahead and look at it. And now here's Body Count. Now you may not be convinced just from that, so let's let them go for a second and really hear them out. Okay, so I think I've made a pretty strong case that Donna to the Rescue doesn't sound anything like Outshined, which let's just listen to it again for a moment. Completely different note structure, completely different rhythm. Now to be fair, both of those midis specifically do mention Outshined, but I think that's down to a simple error. Um, things have been mislabeled before. I know I've mislabeled files before when I was working on Doom wads and stuff. So I think it's very easy to assume that it was just a simple uh, matter of a mislabel because the song has nothing in common with Outshined and it has everything in common with the song Body Counts in the House, which had well and truly uh, been out and done the laps in the music scene when Doom was being developed. Maybe it's not based on anything in particular, but it's definitely not based on Outshined. Now, of course, back in 2017, Bobby Prince did an interview where he talked about E1M1 and said it was just a general metal riff. He hadn't listened to any metal at that point, so it was just a generalized metal riff. My first problem with that is, if you haven't listened to metal, then how do you know what a generalized metal riff is? So that... That's, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, to say anything bad about Bobby. I think his music's great, and I love listening to the interview and everything, so I don't want people to take this the wrong way. I'm, I'm not trying to say anything against Bobby or any of the old id crew, but they are known for making little fibs here and there, specifically John Romero. Obviously, Bobby is not responsible for what John Romero does, but there was that secret in Map 15 that was marked, but you couldn't uh, actually get the secret to trigger and zero master finally found a glitchy way to use a pain elemental to spawn a lost soul on your head and it pushes you down into that sector and it triggers the secret now <laughs> john romero came out and claimed that that was designed in and i totally get why he does that he's a showman and that's funny it's fun to keep the mysteries of doom going after all these years but let's just be realistic you don't do that on purpose it's not the kind of thing that you design into the map on purpose there have been so many bugs that have been discovered about doom that the developers obviously didn't know about anyway the point of this rambling is the history has been revised slightly since the 90s let's just put it that way and I think the idea that Bobby Prince was sitting around writing all of these midis that are clear, you know, plagiarism. I'm not, I'm not trying to say it in a bad way, but I mean, let's be honest. In the interview, he says 
he t- warned it that they would get sued if they used these songs, which I do believe that, absolutely. But what was he writing those songs for then? Why is half of the soundtrack made of existing riffs? And if you listen to the unused music, you can hear that even more songs were direct were copied verbatim that were not used. And you'll notice E1, the shareware episode, is the only one that doesn't have any direct plagiarism in the soundtrack. The Ultimate Doom, and uh, to a much lesser extent, Doom 2, and used midis that are clear uh, copies of existing songs. So, was he just writing those midis for fun? I mean, I seriously doubt it. Maybe so. Maybe so. I, I, like I said, I don't want to say anything definitely. And I do believe him when he warned the id guys that they'd be sued. But this, the story changed. For 20-odd years after Doom came out, the story always was... It was never questioned because it came from the id guys themselves. The story was that Bobby Prince, being a lawyer, knew how much he could sample and uh, get away with. Because none of the songs are identical the whole way through. They steal one identical riff and then the rest is original. But one identical riff is all it takes to count as plagiarism. Anyway, I just wanted to bring that up as a, you know, just keep things, don't accept everything definitely, you know, keep an open mind about these things. And so with that said, when he says E1M1 was not based on any specific track, well, I have to go ahead and isolate the overdrive guitar of each of these tracks and show you what they sound like. So firstly, let's listen to E1M1's harmony track only on the guitar, uh, starting from the 31st bar. And now here is No Remorse, just the overdrive guitar starting from the 74th bar. And now let's go ahead and compare, just in case you didn't hear it the first time, because I did, I interrupted that a little bit. So, so now, without me talking, here's No Remorse, just the one guitar. To be clear, uh, it's obviously not a verbatim copy, but the notes are almost the same. One note is switched, and there's of course the pause, the little riffs here in E1M1, where it just plays through in no remorse. So uh, maybe he's maybe he is, you know, being honest. And the the similarity here is a coincidence. I mean, there's a million and one metal songs that use this melody, or uh, rather this riff structure, and so. <laughs> like I said, I'm not doubting that it's based on general metal, but I do find the claim that he didn't listen to any specific metal before writing it to be very dubious because if you didn't listen to any metal, you wouldn't know what metal, how to cre- then create a very accurate metal song that follows the structure of many pre-existing metal songs. So obviously the knowledge base was there for what constituted metal. So I do contest that one, but anyway, I think I've made a strong case And now, of course, just really quickly, a buddy of mine, Gokuma, over at the Doom World forums, wouldn't let me live it down if I didn't include the comparison of Into Sandy City to the music from Chopping Mall. Now, I believe the story from the Doom Wiki that it's based off of sex type thing. The riff structure is actually pretty similar. Um, But (laughs) what's funny is it actually ends up sounding more like the music from Chopping Mall. So just listen to it and decide for yourself.
Sector 1, going online. Level 1. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, just all in fun, just trying to keep the discussion about classic Doom alive and keep the debate alive. The Doom Wiki even states that it's a controversial topic, and so I'm just go ahead and play into that controversy a little bit more. But I'm at least bringing some evidence for my claims. So uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and uh, take care.